Okay, so this question talks about maximum absolute humidity and then it goes on to define this term. It is the maximum amount of water vapor that atmospheric air at sea level can hold in grams per meter cube. That's the unit you're taking, which simply means that if I have one meter cube of air, then how many grams of water vapor can this air hold at the maximum level? And this is exactly what you have on the graph as well. Just look at this title. Now, these values are given for integer valued temperatures on the Celsius scale from 1 through 41 degrees Celsius and you can easily see this here the x-axis has these labels from 1 through 41 and this is the temperature in degrees Celsius and the maximum absolute humidity that we were talking about that's here on the y-axis so if I simply read it at 1 degree Celsius then the maximum amount of water vapor that one meter cube of air can hold is five grams. This is how you read this. And similarly, you can read any of the other values as well. Okay, then the question goes on and it gives you more information. It says when the air contains this maximum amount, so it's the maximum amount you talked about and it said when this thing actually happens, at this stage, you call air to be at its saturation point. So that's really just a term. We don't know how this will be used later, but we must know that saturation point is exactly connected with this maximum absolute humidity level. These are kind of coming together. Then. You you read further and you find this information that in addition at sea level so this is also at sea level at a temperature of t degrees celsius when are when you're at this specific temperature the density of air containing no water vapor hmm, air containing no water vapor let me just shorten this i'll just call this dry air so density of dry air is given by this formula now, how do you interpret this? Well, because it's dry air, this weight that I have, these kgs, this is this is not for water vapor. This is for air itself and its weight per meter cube. Essentially, this means its weight of one meter cube of dry air at different different temperatures, of course, which is how I see the T as part of the formula. As temperature changes, this density will also change. So essentially, you have these two pieces of information, one about the maximum absolute humidity, which is also on the graph. So I'm numbering them both one. And second piece of information is this thing about the density, which is not on the graph. Now then we've understood the entire situation. Let's see what is asked. Question has two statements. I'll focus on them one by one. So here's the first one. You have these choices to choose your answer from. All right. So at 37 degrees Celsius, so the very first part gives me the value of T and at sea level, which was really the condition throughout the question, the weight of water vapor in one meter cube of air at saturation point, this is connected with the first piece of information that we had in the question, saturation point, weight of water vapor and so on. Saturation point was that maximum water vapor level. This thing, this entire quantity, let me actually call it one only, one is dash percent of, let's read further, and here you see of the weight of one meter cube of air containing no water vapor. Wasn't this exactly what we call dry air? And this is the information we had numbered two in our question text. I'll quickly show you these two things. Here we go. The maximum absolute humidity connected with saturation point and density for the second case. Now it's these two quantities then what I get from one and what I get from two and I have to see one is what percent of two. Simply this is going to be whatever one is divided by whatever two is times 100. So I need to find each of these values one by one. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Let's go and find one, which was all of that saturation point and weight of water vapor. Now, we know maximum absolute humidity. This is the point where that saturation point is, is attained, right? So this is the one we're talking about. Now, we know the temperature given is 37 degrees Celsius. We just need to read the Y value corresponding to 37. So first of all, which point here is 37? Be careful not to just see that, oh, it's the third point from the right. So I'll just count the third point from the right. That will be wrong because these are odd numbers. You have gaps between them and the actual values given according to the question are for all integers from 1 through 41, which means if this last one is 41, this is 40, this is 39, 
38, and 37 is this circle here. Be careful about these things. Now, when you try to read this value here on the y-axis, this is about 41. So then maximum volume, maximum weight of water vapor is 41, which is what my first quantity was. So I'll just replace this by 41. And remember, this is grams. Now let's go on and find the second one, which is simply the weight of one meter cube of dry air. Now, isn't that exactly what we interpreted the density to be? That means I simply need to use this formula for the T value that I know. So I will put in T equal to 37 in this. Now, do not waste your time in actually doing this calculation yourself. You should use the calculator. When you do this, this will come approximately 1.123 kgs. And this, therefore, is the value that we take forward, 1.123. Now, I will write that here, but there is a catch. The unit is not the same. So instead of putting 1.123, I'll just convert those kgs into grams. That's it. And now again, put it in the calculator. You're going to get your answer very close to about 0 0.036. And since the question was about a percentage, you need to multiply that by 100. You will land at 3.6%. Now see the choices here are pretty close. So do not try to approximate something as huge as this. Do not try to approximate here. That will be a time waste, something which will not really save any time and save any effort and actually take you to the wrong answer as well. So this is about first statement. Now here is our second statement. Let's read. Average rate of change of maximum absolute humidity. So this is what we have on the graph, remember, from 31 to 41 degrees Celsius. So there's this entire quantity I'm talking about. This is dash than, and I see my choices, less than, same as, greater than. I am basically comparing it with this entire second quantity. But the second quantity is also talking about maximum absolute humidity. So I still need to look at the graph for both pieces of information. I am just comparing this first quantity A with quantity B. I want to see greater than, less than, equal, what is it like? Okay. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course, and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, the way we apply translate process skills so comfortably in this question, in the EGMAT course, you will learn how to build this translate process skill through purpose-built exercises. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. So how do I read average rate of change from any one temperature level to another? Let's take the 31 to 41 case first. Here we are. So I'll just clear this off. So 31 to 41 means I am reading from this temperature to this temperature at the end, somewhere about here. Now the average rate of change from this duration is how much? You do not need to actually calculate the slope which gives the average rate of change, but you can just see how this is almost a straight line and the slope is this much. I'm not calculating the value since we are just comparing two different slopes. Let's look at the second temperature range also. That's 11 to 21. So we'll simply draw it from there also, 11 to 21. Now this is your 11. This is your 21. This time also, if I try to represent it by a straight line, this is what I have. Now you simply compare these two lines. This is your first quantity for the A thing. This is for your quantity B. Which one is steep? Visually only we can tell that line B is this way, line A is this way, line A is steeper. And if line A is steeper, average rate of change for that one is greater than the other one. And so we mark greater here. It's this particular choice. Okay, so lots, lots happened in this question. First step for us was completely getting comfortable with the data set, understanding everything given, identifying that there were two pieces of information, and then using them appropriately when needed. We also understood that the graph is only connected with piece one so that we don't just always jump into things into data that we don't need to jump into. And that density was only coming from this one formula. The first statement and the second statement both, we understood the overall structure 
author of the statements first, you know, wrote them this way and understood what is the requirement. So we first decided what approach we're going to follow. Then only did we jump into the data. In the first one, once we understood the two quantities we want, this was coming from information one and hence the graph. This was coming from information two and hence the formula. And we simply went back and used them. Here we were talking about average rates of change, which is connected to slope. So we just visualized, we just made these lines and just observed where is it that this line is steeper and just looking at it helped us decide that line A is steeper and hence has a greater average rate of change. That is it.